Hey, what is going on guys? Nick Heron here with Fantasy Football Facts, talking to you guys today about the Le'Veon Bell situation and how it should affect your fantasy team as well as how you're drafting in your upcoming fantasy drafts. I know a lot of people are still doing drafts tonight, tomorrow, even after the first game of the season. So we have to make sure that we're making the right decisions on Le'Veon Bell as, as well as the other members of this Pittsburgh backfield. So today what I really want to focus on is really figuring out what we should do with these guys. So obviously, if you guys haven't heard the news, let's start off with that. Le'Veon Bell has been missing in practice, missing in training camp the whole time, waiting for a new contract. Now, the Steelers want to give him a franchise tag, which kind of works out for the team, not so much for an elite level player, though. That's why you've seen other players hold out when they've been trying to get franchise tagged by their team. So Le'Veon Bell is in a very similar situation to this because he's an elite player who's looking for a big contract. Now, most of us throughout the offseason have been expecting that Le'Veon Bell would report back just like he did last season right before the first game of the season, and he would be right in there in week one. However, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. As we get closer here to week one, he's still not reporting, and it doesn't sound like he's going to be there in week one. Now, we don't know exactly if or when Le'Veon Bell is going to be back. However, we had a report today come out on Twitter from a verified Steelers website. And, and honestly, I don't know the credibility of this, to be completely honest with you, because I haven't seen a whole lot come out from other sources. But what they basically said is that Le'Veon Bell is expected to be back in week 10. Now, that's pretty dangerous for a fantasy team. Because obviously we had guys miss six weeks last year with Ezekiel Elliott and we saw what that did to his fantasy value over the course of the season. That hurt him significantly. Obviously missing 10 weeks is a huge number and it's a number that should certainly affect his average draft position. Right now, prior to this news, he was going first or second overall in almost every single draft. My personal opinion right now is that we should treat this very similarly to how we did the Ezekiel Elliott situation in 2017, where we're not sure what's going to happen, but we have to weigh our risk and reward with it. Because Le'Veon Bell is such a great player, if he does come back, we know that he can give us RB1 overall upside. The problem, of course, is that he might miss 10 games. And if he misses 10 games, that makes it very tough for us to justify having him on our roster. So what I'm currently saying right now is that I believe his upside is still worth having on your team. I wouldn't not draft him, but I would say that I would be looking for him somewhere around the third round. If you're looking at a guy in around the third round, you're still kind of taking a little bit of a risk at those positions. I think the elite guys are pretty much off the board at that point. So that's when I start to take the guys that I think have some big time upside. And obviously Le'Veon Bell has that. So that's where I'm looking at Le'Veon Bell. Now, as far as his backup situation goes, we expect that James Conner is going to step in and be kind of their new bell cow running back, if you want to call it that, there in Pittsburgh, while Le'Veon Bell is out. James Conner is a guy that was extremely talented in college. However, he had cancer in college, so he didn't get to play all of his seasons. He didn't get to show what he could do. So this is a guy that is an explosive player. He's very talented, but he's a guy that we really haven't seen do a whole lot. So there is some risk to that. Where he's currently being drafted right now prior to this news is around the 13th round. No matter what website that you're looking at, if you're on ESPN or NFL or um, if you're looking at it on a DFS platform, if you're on Yahoo, make sure that you go in and look to see where he's currently going. Because if he's going way later than he should be, obviously you want to target him in your draft and maybe take him a round or two or even three earlier than what his current price is. Because you want to make sure that you lock up that Pittsburgh backfield. Whoever's back there behind Ben Roethlisberger in the backfield is going to put up some decent fantasy points. We've seen it before. D'Angelo Williams. Williams stepped in, and this was an aging D'Angelo Williams. This one wasn't a prime D'Angelo Williams. This is after he had been replaced in Carolina and wasn't looking like a player that anyone had any interest in. So he came in and was an RB1 while he was playing. In the games that he started, he was a running back one. I believe James Conner has the upside to do that. So we have to make sure that we're, that we're really targeting him, especially if you're looking at like a zero running back type of strategy, because he's the type of guy that could help you out at the beginning of the season, and then you can go on the waiver wire and pick up guys as, as other running backs go down and things like that. But for the beginning of the season, James Conner has some serious value, and I would really, really, really recommend going out there and targeting him. Um, like I said, his ADP overall right now is around the 13th round. I wouldn't be opposed to taking him in the 10th or even the 9th round right now with this news that's coming out. And obviously, if you take Le'Veon Bell, you want to prioritize getting James Conner as well because you know you want that Pittsburgh backfield, especially uh, if you get, if you get uh, Le'Veon Bell. 
Another player to look at in this Pittsburgh backfield, and I'm not saying he's going to take James Conner's job. I don't expect that to happen. But Jalen Samuels is somebody that you want to look at, particularly on Yahoo. And the reason for that is because on Yahoo, Jalen Samuels is actually a tight end and a running back. So normally, he on all the other sites that I'm aware of anyway, he's just listed as a running back. But on Yahoo, he has dual positional eligibility. And what that means for you is that you can actually start him at tight end when he's playing running back. That's extremely valuable because the tight end position beyond the Gronks and the Kelseys and the, uh, the Ertzes, there's a lot of question marks at tight end this year. If you miss out on one of those elite tight ends and Jalen Samuels is a guy that gets, let's say, 10 touches a game as a running back slash receiver out of the backfield, he could be a tight end one in fantasy. I know it sounds crazy, but it's very possible. If you actually look at the average points that get scored by tight ends beyond the elite guys, you're looking at, you know, you know, maybe seven, eight points a game for the most part for most teams. And Jalen Samuels can certainly give you that. So I would strongly recommend if you're on Yahoo that you look at Jalen Samuels. I'm not saying to go out there and draft him at this point, but keep him on your watch list. And if you're in a deep league, go ahead and take him if you're on Yahoo. If you're in like a 15 or a 16 or more, 14 or more team league, I would certainly look at him. Um, or if you're in a team that has 20 team or 20 player benches, things like that. Some of those deep leagues, certainly go out there and take a look at him because worst case scenario is you cut him if he doesn't get a lot of touches. Best case scenario, like I said, is that he touches the ball maybe 10 times a game. May get three or four catches, may get five, six, seven rushes. And at that point, he has the possibility of, you know, catching some passes, which gives you, if you're in a PPR, some floor, as well as rushing the ball potentially at the goal line, things like that. I mean, this is a serious thing to look at, guys. I know it sounds crazy. We don't get this very often in football. It happens all the time in baseball, and it's very valuable in baseball. But in football, it's extraordinarily valuable if a guy is a tight end and a running back eligible. So that's what I'm looking at, guys. I, like I said, James Conner, probably 8th, ninth, or probably around ninth or 10th round for me right now. Unless we hear guaranteed news that Le'Veon Bell is going to be out till week 10, which could happen. In which case, then you want to boost him up to probably like the 5th or 6th round, honestly. Um, and for right now, I think Le'Veon Bell for me is probably a third round guy. A lot of leagues he's going to go before the third round. And I'm just willing to let other guys take the risk at that point. I, I'm not interested in the headache at this point. Unless I'm in like an eight team league or something like that where I might be able to, you know, get some more depth at running back and just take that chance. So with that said, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure that you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let me know in the comment section below if you have any other questions for fantasy heading into week one. I'll probably do a weekly rankings uh, video of some sort here coming up as well. So be sure to stop back for that as well. Thanks again, guys. Sorry about my nose. If I sound weird today, I'm a little bit congested. Well, actually a lot of it congested. But uh, hopefully we'll be uh, getting better here in the next coming days. So thanks again, and I will talk to you guys again soon.